What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. We are still recovering from last week. And people are still talking about a lot of the stuff that uh, Disney announced, a lot of the stuff that Warner announced pr prior to that event. And uh, people are still mad. And more people are coming out. Um, people are talking about this will have long lasting effects. We'll see, man. I, in my opinion, again, I think Warner Brothers, uh, Warner Media did what they had to do under the circumstances, but yet it was, you know, wrong in, in a lot of people's eyes. Um, we're going to uh, um, go over some industry, industry news, um, some DC news, uh, some Zack Snyder. We, we're going to have a Zack Snyder segment because every week he got something. Um, and then we, as the same way we went down the list of things that we were looking forward to seeing and uh, for Disney Investor Day, the stuff that they announced, we're going to do uh, the same for Warner Media. It's not as much as Disney, but it's still something. Joining me once again is Mr. Brian Schultz to discuss this with me. What's going on, Brian? I'm with you. I feel like I'm still processing the amount of yeah. We got last week and even going back maybe through some of the shows that were named but i didn't spend as much time thinking about to say like, oh, how do i really feel about this so it almost is and then at the same time it's it's been exciting to to need to go to rotten tomatoes this week yeah we'll that yeah. later but it's just it's felt weird almost to go be like oh right there's something new <laughs> coming out that we kind of assess so anyway we'll talk about that yeah. yeah that came out today right wonder woman some places that's correct international markets yep they, they, they haven't um disclosed any numbers yet right no and obviously i think given the more projections worldwide i think very different than when we when tenant came to international theaters this summer so i'm very curious like i said i'm very curious to see the tracking on yeah. day to day this yeah. versus tenant yeah so let's kick it off with industry news Patty Jenkins um, is going to be the director of Star Wars Rogue Squadron. And in an article, um, I believe it was released today, it, it, she talked about how she was approached for the, the gig. And uh, first of all, you know, she, she as, as Patty Jenkins, you know, she's always um, into stories and what the stories are gonna be like. So she, so they approached her and Patty Jenkins, the story gotta be right. And they told her Rogue Squadron and that's something is a dream of hers. Um, and she, she's gotten the opportunity to do it. It's supposed to release December, 2023, which is a long way off. Uh, which begs into question um, certain things that's going on with Patty Jenkins and some of her other projects. Brian, what did you think of this um, announcement? I, I think we spoke about it earlier um, in our last podcast, but you know, what, what do you think this World, World Squadron will do for the Star Wars franchise? Huge opportunity, I think. I'm actually very excited about this. So initially when people saw the title, I think people were thinking, because there is a Rogue Squadron video game. So I think people okay. were like, well, is this literally the video game? I figured it would not be, and now that's being confirmed. It's it's an inspiration from kind of the full set of X-Wing, X-Wing versus TIE Fighter, Rogue Squadron video games and other stories. But you mentioned it at its core, this is really, really about aerial combat. And it's really about Patty Jenkins sort of love of that, wanting to do that on screen. So to our genre discussion, I think that's really cool. Like I said, I think some of the high points of the Star Wars films have come in space in space battles yeah, 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 uh, yeah whether it's millennium falcon chase you know in any in, in a couple of movies the the end of new hope i even thought that the first battle scene at the start of revenge of the sith is actually really well done that's in mm -hmm. space as well um so i think there's there's room here if you want to dig in on sort of you know the pilots and the crew and going on a series of missions and almost making this almost like it's world war ii or world yeah, war yeah. one and then just bringing it into the star wars universe i'm really excited but as you mentioned and i throw it back to you patty jenkins is incredibly in demand and she has an unfinished comic book franchise sitting at dc right now so how's she gonna fit all this into her schedule 
So she has. Uh, so this movie is supposed to come out 2023. Like you said, she has Wonder Woman three to finish. If that's in the cards, I st- I still wonder about that. And she also announced uh, a movie that she wants to do with Gal uh, Gadot, um, Cleopatra. I don't know if there's a release date for that. No, I don't believe so. She's going to be busy. Like, like I said, I don't know if Wonder Woman 3 gets done. I think if you had to prioritize... I mean, if if Pat, if, if Warner Brothers wants her to make a, a Wonder Woman three, she, she I, I, I mean, she's contractually, you know, she's supposed to do it, right? Um, but that's up to Warner Brothers at that point. If they want to even do it, do you, you do you think they're in a position to say, you know what, um, let's not do Wonder Woman three? Can't see it. It's, yeah. it's the most successful thing they have on the board. I think they're going to milk. They're going to try to milk it for all it's worth. And but when I look at the calendar, I also have a tough time seeing Disney come off a Christmas date yeah. in 2023. So that means, you know, just do the math. I mean, she's got to shoot that movie. You know, probably sometime in 2022 because that's a movie that's going to have a lot of effects and a lot of post production. Yeah. Which means if she's going to shoot Wonder Woman three. Before that, they have to shoot it next year. Yeah, and that yeah. seems tough because they don't seem close to being ready to do that. So yeah. that, that's where I sort of say, like, I, I think to your point about the one of our franchise, it just makes me wonder if we're going to be waiting longer than we expect. Because mm-hmm. don't forget, not just Patty Jenkins, Gal Gadot is in yeah. huge demand. I mean, she's got Red Notice. She's filming now with the Rock and Ryan Reynolds. I think she's she has Cleopatra. She's also signed to headline a spy franchise. It seemed kind of James Bondish the other day. Like she's getting a lot of English yeah. role. So yeah. timing could be tough to get Wonder Woman 3 in. Yeah. Let's see, man. I still think it may not get done. There may not be. Because at the end of the day, you, you, I think Patty is one of those people that you got to want to do it. it. It can't seem like work. This, what I do, what I love can't seem like work if I don't want to do Wonder Woman 3 because I've had all these other things going on. But she she said she imagined it as a trilogy. Okay. And so that tells me that she has some story points plotted out. And she said it would be modern day. Yeah. Remember, she said that Amazonian series has to fall kind of between two and three. So she clearly has something mapped out. Yeah. Uh, so that makes me think that she's going to want to come back and do this. But she... To the point about just the physical scheduling, we we I think there's a chance we don't see it till like 2024, 2025. Yeah. Which would be unusually long for, and, for a successful franchise. And you never know, man, with this t- new technology. I just thought about it. Like with this new te- technology with filming and how they're filming Mandal- the, the, the Mandalorian and, and just shooting quicker. Who knows if that plays a, a role in in and directors wanting to take projects and if that is available or well, they don't really got to travel here or there they can make anywhere here right you know so so that can play a role in in in, in her schedule and, and if she can get it done and hopefully they're successful um another piece of industry news that's been going you know gangbusters i see it everywhere Tom Cruise goes in <laughs> on his crew for not following COVID protocols. Am I correct? I mean, I mean, you can pick, pick, probably pick your meme or pick. I mean, he, this. I mean, Daniel Caffey has still got it. That's all I'm gonna <laughs> say. <laughs> Yo, I listened to it. I had to listen. I listened to it a, a couple of times to really listen to what he was saying. Because that, if you receive it for the first time, all you're hearing is somebody yelling at you, and you getting upset that he's yelling at you, right? So I listened to it a couple of times to listen to exactly what he was saying. I did not have a problem with none of what he said and what he was trying to do, and and that if people 
put themselves in a position to really stop production on something that he wants to complete, something that he wants to sort of assist the the world of movie making because it's going it's falling on hard times right so he wants to make this successful he apparently is on the phone at night talking about insurance and just sort of schooling people on how he's been able to do this but it all falls on his on the people that are working for him and, and trying to get this movie done if they're not following protocol and are risking for the 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 show to be delayed for the production to be delayed then i'm just, listen if this is the first time i'll be like yo yo chill you know <laughs> this is the first time but it seemed like this had been going on enough for him to react that way what did you think when you first heard it and did you hear it a couple of times man where <laughs> Where to go on the serious versus the funny. And one more thing, I, and one more thing, George Clooney, I read an article, George Clooney said, oh, I would have gone about it a, a different way, but yet I still don't know all the circumstances, but I probably would have gone about it a, a, a different way. Listen, when people have had enough, people go off. I'm pretty sure George Clooney has had his days as well. Continue. Well, George Clooney was an ER doctor back in the day, right? So... Maybe he just figured, I'll just treat them. I'll just, treat, it's all good. We just move. Uh, no, I, look, I mean, I think part of this stems from the history of this production and I think even the last production. So as good as Mission Impossible has become as a franchise, I mean, it's, it's one of those rare things that's getting better every yes. time they go out. Yes, yes, yes. But if you remember, like, you know, in six, they had to shut down because Cruz broke his ankle on that building jump stunt. You know, so that took, a lot longer and it worked out movie was great mm -hmm. they already had a couple of issues with this production I, th yeah. I think once covid hit what you've seen with other productions and i think this is what Cruz is in part citing um the witcher actually is a good example right so they've stopped and started that production two or three times due to yes. covid since they restart because people are testing positive yes and so i think his part of his point is the cost of a movie like this with a budget is already $200 million. And I think in their case, they're shooting two of these back to back. I think they're doing oh, wow. seven and eight together. Wow. We'll call it maybe 400 million or 350. Mm -hmm. The stakes are just higher for every day they lose. Now we've heard, I think he actually chartered a luxury yes. cruise ship to like create the social distancing environment for the yeah. crew. So, I mean, you know, as, as Cruz does, he never does anything half measure. Uh -huh. I mean, he's to <laughs> put his money where his mouth is to try yeah. to take, you know, the necessary precautions. Yeah. And I think, you know, so to that extent, I, I, I empathize with what he's saying. And like, I think part of what he's angry at is that what was described is not really that hard to avoid. It's like, just don't stand next to each other. It's like, yeah. that's all, I mean, like it, I think the part of his frustration is like, it's not that hard people, right? Yeah, so, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. just make the adjustment. I, move yeah, on. especially for, you know, I don't know how big his crew is, but I'm pretty sure it's substantial, but you know, all he's saying, you know, just follow the rules, man. Let's not, let's not shut it down over some, or, or, because you didn't feel like you were, could breathe or didn't feel like wearing it, whatever the case may be. It's not enough reason for, for 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 to cause a shutdown of this production and get delayed and then just you know get more and more uh, COVID cases because it's you know like you said it costs money. Now what I am curious about is if and when this movie gets done and he starts making the rounds in the press, this is going to be you know very similar to when Christian Bale had his meltdown on oh, yeah. the Terminator Salvation set, which a lot of people are comparing this to. You'll get, he'll get asked about it yeah. at every stop. So you'll kind of get his post-mortem version of this. Um, and what I'm curious to see if it's close to what we think. But that's what, exactly where I was going with it. Like, he'll have plenty of time to think through, like, how am I going to spin this? How am I going to set it? If you watch this show, Tom Cruise, we just gave it to you. <laughs> you just had enough of people not following the rules and, 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 and risking money time and people 
just because you didn't want to wear a mask or just because you wanted to get close to somebody? Well, the irony is, you know, I, I, mentioned, I mentioned a few good men. The irony is he basically became Colonel Jessup. He's like, we follow orders or people die. That's basically what he told. <laughs> what he told everybody <laughs> so he just he just flipped the script from about 30 years ago wow um i thought that i gotta be honest that was the other thing that struck me and i know that tom cruise you know the voice you hear on screen with him actually is his voice like I, yeah. in the sense of like i think actors some actors actors will change their voices depending on roles you know christian bale actually will change his accent even in press depending on the character he's playing so it was a little bit amusing to me to be like, oh yeah, that that is really how Tom Cruise. Yeah, it's like <laughs> just if, like he. Sounds this was an acting movie. gig. Yeah, yeah, I'll be like, that was amazing. <laughs> 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 Let's finally get him that Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, when he was yelling, it's like, oh snap, that's that's exactly how he was sounding in a movie. But wow, wow, it was it was it was. It's like it, you almost thought you almost. I, I listened to it as a performance, almost. Yeah, that, that's what I was getting at. It's like it really felt like you were being taken into a part, yeah. you know. And, and, it, and it was. I think it's also you know Tom, what we hear at least about like Tom Cruise productions is like, and he's earned this, you know, through his through his career is he is in control and at the controls of almost every aspect. Of it. He isn't just the lead on the on the post. He yeah, has fine the cut. Mind. He is involved in the minutia. So I think for him, some you know, I think that you know when Clooney says what he says, I don't know how good Clooney works, but I also think there's a lot of stars out there who just don't have this control and aren't as in the weeds as Cruz is. Yeah. So they wouldn't necessarily take it as personally and so for Cruz I think that's also part of the DNA here it's like yeah. every individual per wouldn't surprise me if he knew the name and background of every single person on that crew yeah. including the ones he was screaming at because that strikes me as sort of the way he, he approached it yeah I'm pretty sure Tom Cruise after that was like listen man you just gotta stop this man <laughs> he probably you know like Tom Cruise you know cool and be like hey man you just listen man I'm sorry but come on man you can't. <laughs> no, okay. So now, 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 if he, if he, if he, if he had taken a right turn during that speech and said, "You're making me angry," <laughs> you wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Would like yeah, we yeah, yeah. Tom Cruise Incredible Hulk reference? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, right? <laughs> I can see him pulling it off. Um, let's get into some DC news. Um. Wonder Woman reviews. I read one. I started to read another one and it sort of started to sound the same, even though they were using different words. And the sense I got from it was <sighs> that is, 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 I don't, I, I, I don't know if I'm getting, uh, this is a great movie film. I, I, I don't think I'm getting that vibe. Like this is a well, must see. I, I, I'm, I'm just, I guess I'm just getting like trying to sell me on Wonder Woman. It sort of sounds similar to the reviews or that people that like Birds of Prey. So if we, you know, if you, if you just look at the Rotten Tomatoes score, it's a little bit lower than the first one. I think it was 89 last time I checked. The first mm -hmm. one was in the 90s. But if you if you go into the critics' scores, they generally seem about a notch lower than the first one. Yeah. So if, they, if someone gave it four stars the last time, they're giving it three stars this time, but still giving it an overall positive review. To me, the things that stood out, both positive and negative. So one is, it sounds like, you know, Gaul is what you'd expect. She's the best part of the movie. You know, the positive message, the emotional side of her character, all that sounds like it's been, they lean into that. Great, good decision. That's an easy one. I would say the, the parts that are a little bit more concerning to me are one, I've told this to you, there were a few critics I saw who found it a little too hokey, a little too cheeky at times, which I kind of said, like that was one of the risks I saw in the trailer was they seemed to be going a little more goofy 
Yeah. And that came up a few times. I think the other thing that came up a few times was also a little concerning is there were people pointing to the, the final battle, whatever that is, mm -hmm. as being too CGI reliant, which I think was also a problem in the first one. I, yeah. I mean, the battle with Ares is not my favorite part of that movie by far. Yeah. The other thing that stood out to me was there, I, I haven't seen a lot of people highlighting either Pedro Pascal or Kristen Wiig as having given a great performance. Like, it, they just don't get mentioned. Like, so that suggests to me they're not bad. It just says they weren't that memorable. And I think that's, a, so that's the other thing that I'm kind of a little bit disappointed, at least, or it lowers my expectations a little bit when we see this. So all in all, it kind of sounds like more of the same or more of the similar. Yeah. That's kind of my, my read. I, and I would agree. I think I liked Wonder Woman 1 a little bit more than you did, but this has the feel of, yeah, it's, it's not really breaking new ground. Yeah, I, I liked the first one. The third act was a little bit weak, but the, I liked. Listen, I think as Wonder Woman, she was she was perfect. I had my issues in the beginning, as some of us do with you know casted um, like Heath Ledger, Michael Key, and a whole bunch of others, and it turned out to be great. And Gal Gadot was one of them. Uh, but the second go around is just like the reviews don't read like someone was truly, truly excited to see this film or saying things that sort of made it a must see for me. I don't know. I think the other thing too is the psychology of there's been so, there hasn't been a comic book adaptation to review in a long time. Yeah. So part of me would have thought the bias would have been to like this movie more just because yeah. even the critics are human. They haven't seen anything like this in a long time. So I'll still watch it, obviously, but I, I do think to our prior discussion, it's not the ideal buzz to have going into HBO Max and Christmas Day. Yeah. Well, I mean, what, 11, 11 more? No, not, I mean, how many more days? Nine, Nine. more days? Nine more yeah. days. Till we get to see Wonder Woman 84. I'm looking forward to seeing it because, you know, this is a big deal. And I'm, again, if Cheetah looks dope, we getting a Thundercats. I called it. I called it. Um, some Black Adam news. Another cast announced. And it's uh, Quintessa Swindell has been cast as Cyclone. Um, I don't know what to say, man. Uh, what were your reactions when you heard that she was casted as Cyclone for uh, the Black Adam movie? And I'll just have to say, I, and I and I and if you've listened to the show, you know that I'm not excited for Black Adam, at least not yet. At least not yet. I haven't heard or seen anything that excites me about Black Adam just yet. What you thought? I similar. I mean, the character is a pretty new one. That's I don't know much about Cyclone other than that. It's only been around maybe 10, 15 years in, yeah. in a just society. You know, obviously a character named Cyclone. Wind is the superpower at the, at the center of it. Mm -hmm. um, the the performer i think identifies as they so there's a little bit of um get some news there i think but the the overarching puzzle that i see forming here that you know we'll see how it goes but these the the rest of the justice society that's been announced there just isn't a ton of star power there so that's what I take from it, right? The Rock is, as we know, I mean, The Rock is the center of any oh, universe that he's in. Yeah. And I, I have yet to see a casting in this movie that provides the balance. Like even, even Hobbs and Shaw, it's like, all right, you got Jason Statham and he greased Elba. Yeah. You know, there's some other pretty big stars there. This is really like The Rock. Yeah. You know, he's carrying this. And the other actors who you know, certainly have a resume, but nobody that comes in there where you say, whoa, that person yeah. signed on for this. And so 
that's leading me back to the question I had, which is, you know, can this movie be truly great if The Rock is carrying, you know, 90 plus percent of it, which it looks like that's what the casting is kind of headed for. And I, I just don't know. I, I, I have I have questions. I don't think it'll be terrible, but I just I don't, don't know if it'll be great. This sort of reminds me of a, of an actor back in the days, an action star. He was in a bunch of movies. He was doing it. It was all about him, right? Then he did Street Fighter. <laughs> the only other guy that had a big name was Raul Julia. Who was? I mean, who was a big name at the yes. time? I mean, yeah. Yes, but and we all know how that turned out. I'm not saying that this may turn out that way, but it sure looks like history is repeating itself. I don't know. I'm just making that uh, comparison. Um, it's got to be the villain. I mean, uh, I mean, whoever the villain is in this has to be on par, if not able to, you know, outshine the rock. And I just don't know if he's going to let that happen. Yeah. But that's the only way I think this a movie like this can work, right? It's We talked about it in the context of Superman, right? Like, Superman's got to have the balance for that movie to work. I think this is doesn't even have the cachet of Superman, but the idea of it's the same. Black Adam's power is Black Adam's strength. Like he, he has to have a balance that's as strong as he is. I'll ask you this one question. Do you think Superman shows up in that? No. You don't think Henry Cavill shows up in Black Adam? No. Okay. I know it's been, I know they keep dancing around it, but I just have a feeling no. Okay. I mean, listen, that's one thing that would get people excited. Right now, the people that are going to go see Black Adam are the rock fans. That's what I think. Black Adam, yeah, you're gonna get Black Adam fans, and you're gonna get you're gonna get people are gonna go check this movie out, but in terms of like Marvel type excitement, well thought out storytelling type movie. This ain't it. At least not for now. Um, Zack Snyder says his already Justice League cut may hit theaters. When I read it, I, I don't think I read the article. I just I just read headlines and I just go with it. And then, and then I sort of, I'm on the right track, but I had a hard time understanding what it really meant. Is it, when it hits theaters, it's going to be R-rated? Is the one being released in on, on the HBO Max platform PG-13? So I, I interpret it differently. I interpret it as the HBO Max cut is R-rated. And that would... I took it as a small positive only because the ultimate edition of Batman versus Superman is also uh, either R rated or unrated, but I think would have been rated R had it been put, maybe it's unrated, but would have been rated R for sure had it gone to the theater. Mm -hmm. So at least that says he's keeping the tone consistent with the universe he created, like whether we love that or not. Yeah. You know, if, he, if his ultimate edition of BBS was R-rated and, and that was the direction he wanted to go, then this ought to be that. Now, he, he also referenced, I think, a couple of things as to why he was saying that if it went to the theaters, it would be R-rated. And so he mentioned the degree of violence that Steppenwolf kind of perpetrates in the movie. But he mentioned, like, cutting characters in half, like, mm -hmm. that, like stuff like that wouldn't get past the board. He also mentioned Batman using the F word. Um, and some of the other overall intensity of the scenes is sort of, hey, this would be more consistent with the R-rated. But the other interesting part of this is, you know, this is supposed to be four hours. Yeah. So he's talking about putting a four-hour movie into the theaters at some some point down the line. That that's a that's a massive act. Yeah. 
I think if there was a time to do it, this would be the time. As theaters possibly start to reopen and they need, I'm pretty sure we're going to have a lot of content, but to have this one time situation be something of an event at theaters. But aren't theaters going to be pissed off at of all, if you're doing it now, this is the one place they wouldn't take a movie like this from. Yeah, because one of us, right? They're like, you, you want us to devote four hours of pop of oh, screens to, after you turned your back on us the way you did? I, I you know, I will see. I mean, time heals yeah. all wounds, but I, yeah, I, it's, I, I think that's more of a dream right now. I think that's, yeah. I think that's a tough ask. Um, yeah. And, and oh, by the way, I think the only way that this happens is if it's really good. Yes. Which I have my. Gun. If this is a tw- if this is what was BB- BBS was like a twenty seven percent Rotten Tomatoes. If this is like a twenty seven percent Rotten Tomatoes. It's not going to be. <clears throat> Hell no, I don't think this is good. if. It, after listening to you and you um, laying out some situations, yes, I don't believe this could happen. And yes, it is a tough ask, and and theaters are not going to go for it because devoting four hours. To a film, I mean, listen, if if the movie is fantastic. If what we see is fantastic and people who support Zach and his vision want to go to the theaters, again, that's that's numbers and that's money, right? Even if for a short period of time. So here's how I think it could, if you wanted to create a scenario where it could happen, again, it goes back to this has to be really good and the subscriber base has to really do it. The way I, maybe this could happen is it comes out, the buzz is huge, people love it. They green light part two as a theatrical release okay. and right before that comes into the theater they put part one in the theater yeah that's how i could see that happen but that i mean that's but well, yeah uh, the time that it will take to get all that stuff done and come on man yeah i, I could i could assemble the infinity gauntlet by the time that happens <laughs> Yeah, it's. I don't know how. Not, I, I, there are people that are hopeful for this, but I don't know if there. I don't see another ten years of this. I don't see another ten years of this. Um, and and one thing I wanted to add to that. Um, so this is getting the R rated. Is it gonna? Is it like? Is it gonna be worth it just to hear? Batman throwing an F-bomb? He hasn't in the past in, in on film. So to have this as a first, is this going to be worth is it? Is it going to be worth it to see Stephen will rip someone apart as if we haven't seen that stuff before? What is, you know, how is, does, does this make it better? That's my question. How does any of this make this movie better? I think the only way that you know, I think he you and I are probably not the best people to answer this question, given how we feel about BBS. But the way I think it could work is simply that by keeping, by, by being tonally consistent, yeah. if you're able to make the trilogy pay off, right? The Man of Steel progression, the BBS to this movie, if, if there is a payoff to that journey, yeah then I think R-rated makes sense because clearly he he viewed the middle chapter as an R-rated film. So like if you get that arc and it's good and you get a, an ending to it, you'll feel better about the whole, I think, if it, uh, if it resonates. But I think like with you and me, like we're kind of so skeptical, it's going to be tough for us to buy back in. The hurdle for us to buy back in is kind of yeah. pretty high. So, so I don't think... Yeah, I don't think more graphic violence or some curse words or some extra dark, intense scenes are going to be the difference. It's really going to be about the whole thing. Yeah. Whether it pays off, you know, his his vision from start to finish. Yeah. I mean, because I mean, it, like, it's like, what's the point of in saying it though? You know, and it's like, I've been saying that Batman, the Batman, could be rated R. Could be. If it isn't, it's fine, but it could be, and I wouldn't be mad at it. Not to say that 
Batman will be the one throwing f bombs. Probably that's not his thing. You'll hear it from other dudes, the detectives or the criminals, whatever, speaking that way. Yeah, you get it. You're in a grimy world, and Batman is navigating this, right? You can you can sort of see people cursing because just that's the way it is. Just to give it a little bit of a authenticity, I guess. So, uh, 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 uh. so that being a rated R film makes sense. This, I don't know. It's I just, think it has something to do, though, with I do think the, the reception to the ultimate edition of BBS was better than the theatrical version. I'm not it. saying that the people then viewed it as an epic, you know, as a classic, but like it was. People generally viewed, even though it was 30 minutes longer, people said, no, it makes more sense. It makes more sense. Yeah. I well, think he's also doing it, to be honest, because the actual theatrical cut was lightened up so awkwardly and so much that I think he's kind of reassuring his fan base Oh, no, 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 don't worry. I'm keeping it dark and in the spirit of what I wanted to do and what I showed you in the last mm -hmm. one. I think that's part of what he's going to say. And it's going to look different, right? Yeah, exactly. There's some um, aspect ratio that he needed to add on to it because it was released in a different format than what he intended. Yeah, there's something to do. Yeah, that's film junkie above my head. But that also goes to like, if it ever makes it to the theaters, he was saying he has to redo some of the sizing of the shots and the frames yeah. to make it work. But it, we also know that, I mean, the color the color matting has changed, right? I mean, we also know like theatrical, there was a lot of red, there was a lot of color. He's taken that out. I mean, he said he wants it black and white. It's probably not going to be black and white, but it's definitely going to be, it's definitely going to be very sort of dark gray, sort of lots of, you know, blues and then, you know, uh, the effects will be bright, but other than that, it's, it's definitely going to be more like the, the darkest parts of BBS only. That's what I expect, at least. And that's what the trailer is kind of showing. Yeah. I don't know, man. Let's see what happens next week on the Zack Snyder show. Because every week he got something going on. And look, man, when it comes out, man, I'm going to be excited to see it because finally, all these years, it finally happens and we get to see it. Hopefully it does well. So Warner Media again last week announced that they're oh, last week or the week before announced that um, they're going to release the entire 2021 slate onto their HBO Max platform. You know, at first everybody was celebrating and then when they found out how they did it, <laughs> the world <laughs> turned on them. Um, but they released, or they're going to release, some pretty interesting titles. And we wanted to give it the same treatment we gave the Disney Investor Day announcement. So let's start off. Uh, mostly films. Um, I don't think they announced any shows, did they? No, this is all films. This is just a transfer of the movie schedule onto the service. So... We got Mortal Kombat, uh, Kombat coming out 2021. It was originally supposed to be released uh, in January, right? Mm -hmm. And then it got moved to April 16th, 2021. Listen, the first Mortal Kombat, none of, none of the Mortal Kombat outside of the video games have worked. There was a YouTube a show that somebody did that was pretty dope. Yep. I don't know whatever happened to that. Um, but outside of that, even the cartoon uh, that came out recently, so it, it was a animated version of the fir of the first film, in my opinion. Right, just a little bit better. Mortal Kombat, in my my opinion, doesn't work unless. You give it to us over time in a series and just build to these moments. In a movie, the, you just can't tell a story of one individual because all these individuals are dope. And we so you should do some exposition with all of these characters and do it via uh, a series. I don't I don't necessarily think it's too late to do that, but uh, if, when it comes out in theaters, I mean, when it comes out in the movies, I don't think it's going to be a great movie. Let's see. Let's see. I, I tend to agree with you. Part of what made the YouTube series fun was they did exactly what you were talking about is they, they really, you know, each of the, the webisodes really only focused on, you know, one or two characters, you know, so there would be the, you know, a Mortal Kombat style fight, 
in the story they were telling, which was a little bit more of an adventure, less so of a tournament. It was done as more as an adventure. But because you were only focusing on one or two at a time, you got to really sort of enjoy that. And they, they did a pretty good job of being faithful to the to the spirit and the powers of of those of those characters. So I mean, I'm with you. I'm skeptical, but I'm also curious. This was probably my favorite fighting game growing up. Yeah. And so every time they go to the well on this, and now they're, you know, they're saying it's going to be a, you know, kind of a harder edge, like closer to, I mean, that's part of what made the game fun, right? It's like, that's the biggest mistake they made, in my opinion, when they even brought this to the screen was to even think about it as anything other than R rated was silly because part of what made the game popular at the time was the, the fatalities and the blood. And that was yeah. new back then. So how could you then make a movie and leave that out of it? Exactly. So they've promised that this movie has those classic elements in it. So we'll see. And then it goes back, I'll throw it back to you because you you know, you you brought up this idea of sort of the martial arts tournament. Yeah. Do you see any chance that this surprises us from just the standpoint of the quality of the martial arts we get on screen? Um, I'd be surprised if it is. I think, like you said, it's more about the fatalities and, and the other gruesomeness that goes on in Mortal Kombat. Um, it'll be interesting to see how those that tournament uh, goes, because it's, you know, it's going to be like the other Mortal Kombat films. You're not going to see all of them fighting the tournament, I don't think, at least. You're going to see some of them fight and some of them are going to have different things that they're going to be doing and they're going to fight in a situation with another guy and there will be a fatality. I think this is supposed to be a popcorn fun type film. I don't necessarily think it's something to take seriously, maybe franchise. I don't know. I don't think so. But listen. You can make the boys work. You can make Mortal Kombat work in that arena, right? But I don't know. I don't. I, I don't. I don't see this movie being great or something. I've been wanting to see the whole, my, my whole entire life. But we'll see. I've been wanting to see a good Street Fighter film. But again, it's difficult to make these type of movies work. Um. When Shang Chi comes out, I'll, I'll probably want to compare the tournament style um, films uh, and, and 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 how they hold up against each other and how one did it different than the other. You know, um, King Kong versus Godzilla. Listen, the second Godzilla, the last Godzilla that came out, to me. And I challenge anybody to tell me different. But that Godzilla was the best Godzilla movie ever. You can't compare that Godzilla to 1980s, 1970s Godzilla. You cannot compare the two. The last Godzilla was the best Godzilla ever. I enjoyed that Godzilla. They gave you history on the monster, so you knew what was going. These these things didn't just come out of nowhere. There was a lot of explanation. There was a lot of exposition, and I think they did a fantastic job. Now, how does King Kong fight this dude <laughs> and wins? That's a different story. But I am interested and excited to see this film. And I can understand why those dudes are mad that it's not going to be in theaters. Yeah, this is this is the biggest of all the movies on the slate that's moving. In my opinion, this is the biggest loss um, in terms of this is this is because I agree with you. Um, I think I think this series, and it's weird because it almost didn't start out as it was meant to be. It wasn't like a Marvel style. We plotted it from day one. It, it kind of became a series almost retroactively. Yes. But I think the quality start to finish is a little underrated overall. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I think Skull Island is pretty enjoyable. I think the 2014 Godzilla that kind of kicked it off um, is quite well done. I think that, the, was, that was with Brian Cranston, correct? 
Yeah, but more like Aaron Taylor Johnson and Elizabeth yes, yes, Olsen, yes. right? It was the, yes. sort of the Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver back yes. together in, in that movie. Um, I think that one was was underrated too. A little bit more of a slow burn, but I think it was yeah. you know, once we once you got to the fight with the Mutos, it was pretty pretty cool. I mean, it was some pretty yeah, pretty yeah. fun visuals. And then to your point, like you know, they kind of took the lid off in King of the Monsters, and um, you know, I think for me, the only part I didn't I didn't love the resolution. I didn't the, the, the sort of the the video game of like Moth, where it gives him the superpower version of himself, and that's mm -hmm. how he beats um, Ghidorah. Mm -hmm. But I thought visually, I mean, the fact that they brought those classic monsters in, <clears throat> I was always a sucker for the for the Japanese films. I actually love rewatching the campiness of the dudes in the suits, you know, going at it. I think it's hilarious. I um, can't. Never, <laughs> to me, it never gets old. So when I see it done kind of serious, semi-seriously with really good effects, yeah, 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 I'm in every time. So to me, this is. You know, this is the only way this could go. And like to your point, how does Kong win this? Yeah. Or how does Kong even compete? <laughs> well, one, they made Kong like so much bigger in Skull Island than he was in any other. So they kind of planned ahead. They're like, all right, we yeah, need yeah. we need an ape who's who's you know beyond gigantic. And you know, the other thing is they did show him fighting you know huge dinosaur-like creatures on his island. You know, so we have that established. I'm also guessing, you know, if we're building up all these other monsters. And introduce them in King of the Monsters. They're all going to have a role to play. So even though these two are the headliners, there's going to be a little bit more of a you know tag team free for all or something that's going on. And who knows? Maybe they even team up. You know, I don't know. Maybe they maybe the two of them wind up on the same side. Possibly. You never know. Possibly. Um, but I'm 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 here for it. It's the kind of movie that I, I I'm always going to want to see. So. He, imagine we get Mecha Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying, right? So this is the kind of movie you can hide that, you know, especially now with COVID where you haven't had to put any footage out or anything like that. This is the kind of movie that if I was them, I would put nothing in the trailers, nothing. Yeah, I yeah. would just have tease shots of the two of them. Yeah, you don't, you don't, all. you don't put Aquaman in the suit on, in the trailer. No, exactly. Don't show them fighting in the trailer. Let me imagine yeah. what that's going to be until yeah, exactly. I get Exactly. Just get them in the seats. Just get them in the seats. Yeah. Get them in the seat. If you're showing something, then you'd be like, eh, you sort of start to play, you start playing it out in your head. <laughs> yeah, exactly. you're done, right? Um, but with Godzilla, man, I was done after baby Godzilla. When baby Godzilla came out, I was done with Godzilla. I said, no more, no more. Then we got Matthew Broderick. I was like, what the hell is this? Well, that was, yeah, that's a whole other. <laughs> that's a whole other. That, that, that I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't acknowledge that that ever happened in my Godzilla fandom, but. Um, Dune, listen, the cast looks amazing. Hopefully Jason Momoa is not Jason Momoa. Um, He's like sixth or seventh on the list though. I don't, I don't think his part's actually that. I mean, we'll see. I don't think his part's that. Yeah. I mean, he'll probably be a fan favorite. Who knows? Let's see. Um, to me, I, I was never really into Dune like that when I was a kid. No, I agree. I remember when I was a kid, I was watching like Solar Babies. I've seen that a bunch of times. Um, and Dune, I saw every once in a blue, but it never kept my attention. A similar movie comes to mind, and that's uh, Blade Runner. When I was young, I just really, um, although people, you know, believe it was, a, it was an amazing film, I, I never really got into it. And then we get. A few years ago, we get Blade Runner 20, 2049. Ironically, by the same director as the director of Dune. So pretty funny that you would bring those two up together. And yo, and I didn't know that. I didn't know that. And this is the thing. Time has passed by. Are people going to care about, you know, you're going to get those classic Dune people that watch it back in the day are going to watch it. You know, I don't know what the fanfare for Dune back in the day was. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be, if it was good, I don't know if it's going to return now. It's just too much time apart. I don't know where this goes. Is this a one-off? Possibly, who knows? Uh, but um, yeah, I'm not too excited to see Dune and the and the director of Dune has just sta recently stated that because of the move that Warner Media made, he killed whatever possibilities of doing more films, you know? So what do you think? Well, 
Let me ask you a question for us. Did you like Blade Runner 2049? Again, that movie, I, I couldn't I couldn't watch the whole thing. I don't know. It's just it's just it's just one of those things. Because this strikes me as very similar in terms of I think it's gonna be incredibly well made. I think it's gonna be critically acclaimed, and I'm just not sure the audience is there for it. I, people people forget because Blade Runner, the original now, is considered you know one of the great sci-fi films of all time. It was a box office failure in 1982. Failure. It did not make money. It went close to making money. And that was when Harrison Ford was in Star Wars and had done Raiders of the Lost Ark. You couldn't be a bigger star yeah, than that guy was crazy. when they, when that movie came out. Yeah. So Dune is not something that's ever been successfully adapted. And I think part of the struggle is the book. The book does not lend itself to film. It's it's sci-fi, but it's not sci-fi in the way we think of Star Wars or Star Trek. It's like very political. You know, it, the, the the conflict is over spice, right? It's not over fruit, really. It's, it, it's, it is not really, it has the themes of freedom and liberation, but it's not really as simple as some of the things that we love in classic sci-fi. So it's a tough thing to do well yeah. on screen. Now, this is probably the most capable filmmaker to try it, and the cast is amazing. Uh -huh. But I got to be honest, it, it, I actually think this movie going to HBO Max is going to be a better outcome. I think this had a chance to be a major financial disappointment, even if it was a good movie. Yeah. Just based on, you know, Blade Runner 2049, you know, granted, these are not great comps, but, you know, I'll just throw it out there. Like the last Terminator movie, is not bad. Like if you just sit there and watch it, Dark Fate is not bad. Uh -huh. But the time may have just passed by for those kind of movies. Like the audience didn't like it, didn't want it. You know, so oh, again, this is Dune for me, it's a win because that's a movie I would have been like on the fence about whether I go to the theater. But on the service, 100 percent Easy, yeah. easy decision. I'll watch yeah. it. Um one that I'm interested, not excited to see because I think the last two films uh, after the original weren't for me that great. Although you can sit down and go on and on and argue with someone who loved them and they'll explain the whole philosophy or whatever the case may be and what was going on. It just was, I, I didn't enjoy it as much as I did the first one. Matrix 4 is making his way back. I'm sure they're mad about that one too going on to, uh, let's see, who knows? This is just, this is a tentative list. For some of the, some of these, this probably will stay on the platform, but you never know. Vaccines are coming, so you never know. But Matrix 4, uh, Again, the last two films I, I didn't enjoy that much. I watched them, uh, but I, I, I don't, I, I, I don't, I'm not thirsting for it. A Matrix Four. Let's see. Do they, if they saw any mistakes of the last two films, or is this a film to correct them? I don't know. What do you think, Ryan? Well, I don't understand what the defense. There, there's no defense for Revolutions, in my opinion. Reloaded has moments that I, if Reloaded is on TV. And he's about to fight the Merovingian's henchmen yeah. in that sort of entryway. Yeah, I'll yeah. watch that. Yeah. Um, the driving scene through the city, even with all the little bugs and mistakes in it, is really fun to watch. So there's some scenes in that I, I enjoy watching. Yeah. Revolutions was such a that, that's what that is one of the biggest letdowns I've ever had going to a movie in my life. Yeah. In my life. I remember going to that theater and being like, looking at, I was with my friends and we were all looking at each other like, what, what, the hell like, what happened? <laughs> like, what happened? Plug us back in. Plug us back in. Like, we woke up. I black. don't want to remember nothing. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Give me the steak back. Like, this is, this is brutal. So, so I, my big, biggest thing is I don't know where there was left to go with this, let alone. Yeah. Yeah. And, and quite honestly, this was one time where like, seeing the original cast involved just made me more confused yeah. it, it would have made more sense to me if you were like hey 
it's a computer, it's a CGI virtual world. There's another adventure to tell. And like, there's another iteration of the matrix that's back and okay, like maybe, but like how, how are Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss and Jada Pinkett Smith, how did they make any sense in this 20 years later? I think, so I'm, I'm kind of just confused, but I will tell you this, my expectations are pretty low. Yeah. But I actually think there's a chance this might surprise me to the upside because I just I'm not looking for anything out of it. Yeah, true. And, true. You know, the Wachowski. So there's only one Wachowski. So Lana's directing it, not the two of them. Mm -hmm. But as bizarre as some of their movies have gotten, and they generally have disappointed since The Matrix, right? You had Speed Racer, Jupiter Ascending, Cloud Atlas. I will say this, like wow, that's a lot of big bombs. <laughs> that's a lot of money. That's a lot of budget. That's a, a lot of budget they got put into those that didn't go so well. But that being yeah. said, I will say this in their defense, they always come up with something visually that's at least interesting. Mm. So there's always even in those movies, I've seen them all. There's always something in those movies where I'm like, hmm, that's pretty creative. So, you know, this is another one where it's like, hey, this is what got them started in their big break. And you know, I yeah. Part of me just hopes like for them to even green like this in the first place, they had to have been wowed by the concept. So, yeah. well, we'll I, see. yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, the, this is this would be if I had money like that and I was in the chair where they're asking me for money to 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 invest in this film, I'd be like, nah, I'll pass. I think the biggest. So we'll see. In, in my mind, one of the biggest red flags is that Lawrence Fishburne is not in this. Yeah, right. Well, because he just strikes me as a very discriminating actor because he doesn't act that much. And I get it. He was in Man of Steel. He was good in Man of Steel, actually. Yeah, yeah. But Lawrence when, Fishburne is dope. But when they, you know, he said like they didn't ask him that. Yeah. So either way, like whether he, whether they did and he didn't want to do it, or they didn't ask him back, Matrix World doesn't feel complete without Morpheus in it. Yeah, I mean that's why I think Yahya Yahya Matum Mateen. Yeah. He, I think he is going to be like the younger version of Morpheus. Which is a good choice. I mean, yeah, yeah, but. I mean, we'll see, man. There's, there's, there's. Uh, right now, I'm not terribly excited for it this matrix four I'm, I'm pretty sure fans of that franchise are excited for it but no one knows what this movie is going to be about just yet um and probably won't know until even after the movie <laughs> what's going on here's but, the rea here's the reality though we talk, and it goes back to the dune discussion rebooting and doing sequels to films from 20 30 years ago in sci-fi has generally not been a profitable move so i mean let's let's go down the list you have we'll see how this one does but like tron legacy disappointment at the box office. i thought it was a decent movie but disappointment at the box office. It wasn't an audience for it i know the jj abrams star trek reboot started out really well but that petered out fast yeah to the point where they couldn't justify making another one after the third um I mean, heck, you might even throw Star Wars, not Force Awakens, but just sort of the where we ended up, Rise of Skywalker. Like, did they go too, to the well too often with that? Yeah. Total Recall was remade, obviously, 20 some odd years later. That was terrible and <laughs> didn't make any money. Yeah. Blade Runner, we just talked about. Yeah. It's tough in sci fi. People don't tend to like the same stuff in sci fi yeah, yeah, 30 yeah, years yeah. later. Yeah. And, you know, if it's done the same, if it's you know, just modernized. And so I don't know. I have questions. But. Yeah. One that we're certainly excited about and looking forward to is Suicide Squad. James Gunn comes in and takes over the the, the, the Suicide Squad franchise, possible franchise, and people are going crazy over it. I can't wait to see it. Um, there's a few characters in there that I'm interested in seeing like shark man i don't know what that's gonna look like or how that's gonna come across on screen uh 
I don't know what the premise is just yet. Do you know? No, we have, I mean, the featurette, they're clearly on an island at yeah. some point. You can yeah. sell it because there's a battle on a beach. We can yeah. see that. I have a question. I have a question for you though. Yeah. No one's talked about it, but I, you know, because clearly they're moving the schedule. They've set a schedule, which means we got to get trailers. Wonder Woman 84, you think we get some? When is it supposed to come out, Suicide Squad? August. August. So, like, chances are we'll get a Snyder Cut trailer for sure, which we've already seen. But, like, any chance we get something other than the featurette for Suicide Squad? I think, I, I think we should. I think we should. I think HBO, Warner Media should do whatever it takes to get people excited. And being that December 25th, all eyes are going to be on the service. Why not put something out, you know, repping HBO Max? And that's and you keep it genre consistent, right? Where you keep yeah. the comic book. I mean, plus, we know James Gunn never sleeps, and somehow his day is like 87 hours because he's like <laughs> writing shows and directing eight shows and around the world. I don't know what he's so he clearly had time to cut a trailer, I think, yeah. since the feature. So. Yeah, I mean, after the Batman, there's no excuse. Yeah, good, great point. Yeah. I, I think we should. I think that's a that's a sleeper thing we could look for in nine days. Yeah. Um, and the last film, which you've mentioned before, uh, Brian, that if you you had asked the question if it would be a movie that you would go see in the theaters, um, or uh, watch it on the streaming platform, and you chose uh, to possibly watch it on the streaming platform rather than go to the theaters, the little things. Uh, could you talk a little bit about this film and why you're excited about it? About this film? Well, I mean, look, first off, three Oscar winners in the lead role. So Denzel Washington, of course, won two Oscars. Uh, Rami Malek, who won um, two years ago, and then Jared Leto, who won for Dallas Buyers Club. So, and it's it's a crime kind of cop cop sheriff versus criminal movie. So Washington and Malik are partners i guess sheriff and deputy and they're going after a, a murderer and leto so like i don't know much else than that but i mean just i mean denzel generally doesn't give you bad product especially when it comes to the action genre i mean you kind of know like everything he puts out there whether it's equalizer whether it's you know man on fire um it's always pretty good and yeah. so I just, when I saw this, I was like, this is a movie that's tailor made for the service because I don't know that the big screen makes it. Like it's not an effects driven movie, yeah. but it's a kind of movie that like, if it's pretty good, like, I, you know, it's, it could be, you, you might want to go back on the service and watch it a couple of times. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the hook. And I think that one's actually right now, I think it's the end of January. That one's slated to be 2021. Out. I think it's yeah. I think it's. I think with the, the release schedule I saw was like at January 29th or somewhere around there. Supposed yeah. to put that out. And 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 just to make a, a final point on that, if you think about if things were normal and little things was coming out in the theater, and you have all these other big budget films, where you know, does it does it have that sort of niche that's um, that's a that generates revenue? For it to be in the theaters when it has to compete with all these other big budget films, I don't know. I don't know. I th I think you're right. Little th this type of movie because I I want to see this movie. You know, if you're like me, you like Seven. You like um, the Killing. Um, I don't know if you even saw the Killing. Yeah, the TV um, show. I mean, yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, another Zodiac. Yeah. Mark Ruffalo, that was dope. I love that movie. Uh, and, and many other films that that when it comes to that, you you wanna you, you're 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 engaged. You're engaged because you're trying to figure it out as well as um, they are, and finding these little clues and, and discover making these discoveries and stuff like that. So you know the the thrill of the chase is always a move a kind of thing that. You want to you want to sort of watch and, and and if they make it believable and engaging, then you have yourself a winner. Similar, the the Batman is similar in that way. So uh, I think they have a, they, they have a good thing uh, going with the little things on the platform. Um, any final words, Brian? 
No, I think we I think we covered it. I did think I had one other thought coming off of Disney Investor Day because I, you and I had the same feeling coming off that, which was that it was the rare instance where Kevin Feige kind of got overshadowed, even though he was he came last in the lineup. It felt like Star Wars kind of was the what stole the show. Star, yeah. <laughs> but it got me thinking: was that deliberate? Because I don't know that a four hour investor day is the right format for where Kevin and Marvel and Disney would really showcase the big new stuff, right? The, the trailers we got were for things that have been long in the pipeline and we knew would come. I would bet there's some footage somewhere inside those studios of some of the other stuff. And I would venture to say there'll be maybe some other forum at some point. Because we really didn't get like, you know, we didn't get the classic sort of Comic-Con Expo circuit this year. Yeah. You know, D23 wasn't really D23. So it just makes me wonder whether they're holding back to where, you know, they get a little more line of sight on the theatrical releases. And then we we get a flurry of sort of Eternals footage and Shang-Chi footage and, you know, that that sort of thing. It, it, that, when, I, when I thought about it, it made more sense. It would have been almost a little weird at the end of four hours when everyone was that tired or not yeah. logged on anymore to then hit you with a Shang Chi trailer. So that, that was my only thing. That would be that would be an interesting question for Kevin Feige. You should tweet him to see what he says. <laughs> you never know. You well, never I assume know. I assume you know like the safe bet would be like when WandaVision comes out that you get, you just get a replay of the Falcon Winter Soldier trailer, the Loki trailer, but this is Disney and this is Marvel. There's always that extra hook, you know? And so part of me wonders whether there'll be something else attached to that as an example. Yeah. And that builds buzz, you know, yeah. we'll see. But Yeah. So we're still talking about what happened two weeks ago started it off with Warner Media and then Disney and just some of the little tidbits that we're getting from those days and some of the uh, little things that have come come out after that. Um, December 25th, we get Wonder Woman 84. This Friday, we get The Mandalorian. The Mandalorian, man, is amazing. That's a bold move, by the way. He's calling his shot. Who are you talking about? Mandalorian patching into the Moff Gideon ship and saying, I'm basically, I'm coming oh, to get you. That's a bold he, move. He was repeating to him what he said to him previously. Yep. Uh, I, see, I thought it was kind of corny at first, but when I, I finally realized that he's repeating to him what he said to him, that's gangster. That he, he that he remembered all that stuff. Yep. <laughs> um, Listen, The Mandalorian is, is a show that I cannot wait for every Friday. Every Friday, I don't care what time it is. As soon as I wake up, get my coffee, get my station working, whatever, and I turn it on to watch it. It's only it's only a half hour. That's a lunch break. For a lot of people, that's a lunch break. So I, I watch it, and every week, it, although last week wasn't that, like, uh, as 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 powerful as the, the the previous one when Boba Fett made his appearance and and was part of the whole thing, um, this one uh, still was still good. This one was still good. Uh, and uh, how many more episodes are left? No, this is it. This is the last one coming up. Yeah, they're coming for the ship. So this is it. This is, I'm I'm assuming the Dark Saber Showdown is of some kind is in this in this episode. Really? How long do you think this episode is going to be? Do you know? I bet it, no, but I bet it's no long. I mean, the longest one they've had to date, I think, is 47 minutes. So I don't think this one's going to go over it. They tried to keep it tight. I think it's going to be more a real cliffhanger. I, I see no chance he gets the, that he gets Baby Yoda back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or if he does, some, there'll be some catch to it. Yeah. But, I mean, you got to keep it going because they already started filming the third season, right? They've definitely greenlit the third season. I don't know if they've started filming it. Um, but I'm also on the lookout for... I mean, something's going to get dropped in this episode that hasn't been done. Right? They've done a great job of it. Like, so something's going to be put in there. Like either, either, you know, does the does the Jedi who heard the call on that planet show up in this? Like, you know, you know they're going to end it too. Like last season, they ended it with the dark saber. 
right? That was the tease, right? So they're going to end it with something crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, I can't wait. It's yeah, cool. I think I think they've uh, established that 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 last um, episode to be something to get people excited and looking forward to the next uh, season of it. So I, I doubt they'll disappoint. Cause it's just Star Wars is man. It has like there's so many stories to tell. It's like you can keep going with this however long you want to go with it. Doesn't have to be necessarily the Mandalorian. It, we can get like four or five seasons of that and then move on to something else. Who knows? And they have Mandalorian coming in once in a while. But uh, Star Star Wars is 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 going through. I, I would say a renaissance, so to speak a revival of that universe and hopefully it, it get back it gets back to form in the theaters one day mm-hmm. one day um but that's gonna do it for us i want to give a shout out to freddie maloney i want to give a shout out to mr bobby marks uh bobby broadway mike what's going on thank you for the subscription and thank you for the like uh, who else want to give a shout out to Neil and just want to say thank you to all you guys to AJ. Thank you, AJ. What's going on? AJ hit me up and it was hit us up in the comments, hit that like button again. Um, just want to say thank you to all you guys who have, um, liked and subscribed and, um, let us know in the comments what you think about all we've talked about. I always forget to sort of. Uh, how would I say prompt you guys after each uh, topic but remember hit that like hit that subscription um, um, bell Um, comment in the comment section below whether you disagree or agree with what we're saying and uh, we're going to keep it doing what we've been doing and that's giving you the news every week all right Uh, Brian thank you once again for joining us and providing your commentary and your knowledge And we'll see you next time on the Nojin Report. All right, take care.